Now we're going to look at preparing an operating budget. Um, and within the operating budget, we're looking at specifically the production budget. Bailey Company expects to sell 1,500 units of finished product in January and 1,750 units in February. The company has 180 units on hand on January 1st and desires to have an ending inventory equal to 80% of next month's sales. March sales are expected to be 1,820. Prepare Bailey's production budget for January and February. So we'll come down here and we're going to start out with budgeted units to be sold. Then we're going to add the desired units in ending inventory. And that's going to give us the total units needed. Then we'll subtract out the units in beginning inventory. And that will give us the budgeted units to be produced. So we have budgeted units to be sold, 1,500 in January and 1,750 in February. Then our desired ending unit or ending inventory is 80% of next month's sales. So in January, we can say equals February sales times 0.8 we get 1400 then for February we can't reference March but they told us that we expect it to be 1820 for March so we can say equals 1820 times 0.8 for 1456 so now we can add these two together for total units needed less the units in beginning inventory. And so it told us we had 180 units on hand on January 1st, so put 180 here. And for February, our beginning inventory is going to be January's desired ending inventory. So we'll reference up to that 1400. And that will give us total units to be produced, so 2900 minus our beginning inventory gives us 2,720. And so, so let's do a total here. We have 4,526. And I just, we're going to come back up. We'll do the totals down this column, and then we'll do a double check that when we total down, we get the same 4,526. So for budget units to be sold, it's the addition of both January and February for 3,250. For the desired units and in ending inventory, we're going to pull over February because that's, that's the, February is the last period that we're looking at or the last month in our period. And so we can't have the sum of these two things in our ending inventory because we used up this ending inventory in February, so it's only going to refer to the 1456. The total units needed is going to be our budgeted units sold plus our ending units, and that gives us 4,706. On the side here, we can add together across this row, and we see that that's a different number. And that's because of the desired ending units. So just caution you against that. Then our units in beginning inventory is going to refer to our first month. So just to January. And that's the 180. And now let's do the total units needed minus our units and we're coming down the total column and we still end up with that same 4,526. So that can be your double check when you're uh, doing this. And I always recommend using Excel references as much as possible because if you're doing one continuous problem with all of 
the various budgets, they're going to keep referencing the information that you've created in the previous budget. And that way, if you have a mistake, you can update it in one place and it'll correct all your numbers. So the cell references will definitely be in handy when you're doing a big problem, which is what is required in this chapter.